Hi, welcome to Java Coding Assist. In this video, we are going to see how the authorization code flow works for a custom authorization server. This is the OAuth2 authorization code flow. Initially, the client application requests a code with the authorization server. It sends its client ID to get the code and the authorization server responds with a code to the client application. The client application then requests for the access token with the authorization server by sending the code along with its client credentials. The authorization server verifies these information and sends back an access token to the client application. The client application then uses this token with the resource server to get the information about the user and it uses this information, user information to authenticate and authorize the user to access its application. So this is how this user gets access to this client application. This user, instead of creating a new account in this client application, it just authorizes this client application to make use of some of its details to log in this user into this client application. So this is how this OAuth2 authorization code flow works. We can see a real time scenario here. Imagine the stack overflow is a client application. This user wants to access this stack overflow. Instead of creating a new user account in stack overflow, this user authorizes the stack overflow to get some of the user details which is already there in the resource server so that the stack overflow makes use of that user details to authenticate this user. So now the stack overflow just contacts the authorization server and gets a token back and uses that token to get the user details and stores the user details in stack overflow to authenticate the user in future. So this is how the authorization code flow works in real time. So stack overflow is a client application now. I want to access this stack overflow. Instead of creating a new account in stack overflow, I just use one of these authorization servers to log in into stack overflow. Now let me use the Facebook authorization server. So it asks for the username and password. When I just give the username and password for the Facebook as a user, I say that I am just authorizing the stack overflow to get some of my details from Facebook and use that details to log in me. So now if I log in, it just takes me to the stack overflow. So now I am just logged in into stack overflow using the OAuth2 authorization code flow. Now we can see how to create this entire flow. We already have this authorization server and now we have to create this user resource server that contains the user information and it is going to be a resource server. Let's first create the user service application using these dependencies Spring Web, Spring Data JPA, H2 Database and Cloud OAuth2 Security and DevTools. We can just generate the sample application imported in Eclipse. We have imported the sample application into Eclipse and this is the user service so it is going to have an user resource controller with all the post, get, put and delete mappings. Then it has the corresponding services and models to access this user resource. It also has an user resource server config class that extends the resource server configurer adapter where we just configure the HTTP security. Here we configure the HTTP security for various endpoints. And this is going to act as a resource server. So we have to use this annotation and enable resource server. Next in applications.properties file, we have to set the client ID, the client secret, resource ID, token information URI. And this is the endpoint where this resource server verifies the incoming token with the authorization server. And this user info URI is the endpoint where it gets the user information when it is using the authorization code grant type. So we have to set all these properties here. Now our user service is ready where we get the user information while using the authorization code grant type. Next we have to create the client application 
that uses the authorization code grant type in order to get the user information from the authorization server. We can just create a client application using these dependencies Spring Web, Cloud Security, Time Leaf, and Spring Boot Dev Tools. Let's generate the application and import it in Eclipse. I have imported the sample client application into Eclipse and in this application we do have a controller called home controller that handles the request to the backend services and we have an HTML file which renders the data from the backend services. Here we have the links to call the backend services and this authorizes the link which initiates the OAuth to authorization code flow. And utilities is a link to get back the utilities from the backend services after obtaining the token from the OAuth to authorization server. Logout user is used to log out the users. So this is a HTML file, and also we have an web security configuration class that extends the web security configurer adapter, and this is used to configure the security to this client application. Here we configure the security to the different endpoints. Here only the users with the roles admin, manager and user can access the utilities endpoint and other endpoints are permitted to all. Now we can see how the code flows in the controller class. This is the authorized endpoint which initiates the OAuth to authorization code flow. So first what we do is we are just going to call the authorized endpoint of the authorization server. And here we pass in the response type as code and the client ID and the redirect URI. This is the callback URI to which the authorization server responds with a code and the scope is read. We are just going to send this request to the OAuth to authorization server and this is going to go through the Zool proxy. Here you can see in applications.properties we have given the authorization URI it is first directed to the Zool proxy and this is the endpoint to get the code from the authorization server. So first the request will be going to the proxy and from there it will be mapped to the authorization server. And this is our callback URI. This is a client application from where we are just sending the request. That is this Zool client application and this is the callback endpoint where you will get the code from the authorization server. Here I have given the server.port that is nothing but this 8084. So whenever you write like this it will be substituted with this value server.port. So this is the callback endpoint after sending this request to the authorized endpoint you will get the code back here in this endpoint. So we get the code here. What we do is we just again send a request to the token endpoint to get the access token. This is a token endpoint. Again, we are just sending the request to the Zool proxy and this is the OAuth token is the endpoint where we get the access token from the authorization server. So we send a request to the access token endpoint and here along with this request we send the code which we got from the authorization server. And the grant type is authorization code and again we have to send the redirect URI and along with this request we have to set the headers to. The headers contains the client credentials. The client ID and the client secret is encoded using this base 64 and we set it in the authorization header. Authorization basic and we set the encoded credentials here we are going to send the request using this REST template along with this authorization header. The response to this request will be the access token. So we are going to get the access token from the response and again now we are going to call the user information URI that is the. So when sending this request we have to send in the access token which we got from the authorization server. We have to add it to the authorization header along with this bearer keyword. As a response to this request we get back the user details. We then use this user details to authenticate this user and grant access to this client application. So this authorization code flow is used whenever the user is not ready to provide any username and password to the application and he just authorizes the client application to get some of the user's details 
from the authorization server and use that details to authenticate the user. So this is how the flow is going to be. So here you can see we just get the name of the user and permissions of that user and we make use of that to authenticate the user and set the authentication token in security context folder. So this is how we authenticate a user using this OAuth to authorization code flow. Also here we have the model classes to map the data from the backend services and in applications.properties file we have to set the cookie name for that session. You can just give any name here but you have to set this cookie name here for that session. Now let's run the application and see how it works. We have started all the services and all the services are up and running. We can check that in Eureka dashboard. Here you can see all the four services are running. Now we can just call the authorized endpoint of our client application. Client application is running in EP84 and we are just calling the authorized endpoint. You can see now it is redirected to the authorization server login page. As soon as we called the authorized endpoint of our client application, we just get the login page of our authorization server. That is, we are redirected to our authorization server. Here, the user has to authorize the user by giving the user's username and password. You can see here it just asks for the user's authorization. Do you authorize the MVC client? That is the client application. Here you can see the client ID for this. Zool client application is MVC client. Here it asks whether you authorize this MVC client application to access your protected resources. And here it is asking for the read scope. If you approve it, authorize. You will be taken back to our client application. Here you can see the client application has authorized the user SAM using the details from the work to authorization server. We have taken the name and roles of that user and this client application has authorized this user by getting the user details from the authorization server. So this is how the OAuth2 authorization code flow works with the Zoom proxy. Here you can see it is first calling the OAuth authorize endpoint with the response type as code, client ID and redirective URI. And then it takes us to the login page and then it comes back to the client application. It gives the authorization code here. This authorization code is again used to fetch the user information. The client application now stores this user details in its database and make use of this information to authenticate the user in the future. So this is all about implementing security in Zool using OAuth2. Please let me know your doubts and feedback in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Bye.